So today we're going to take a look at our last set of problems from the chapter nine comprehension check. And I've kind of grouped these problems. The first set was just on solutions and saturations. And then the second set was molarity and molality. And this set concentrates on boiling point and freezing point calculations. So for the second part of the chapter, we're introduced to the thought that if you have some like a liquid water, and you were to dissolve a compound in it, let's just go with salt, that you actually raise the boiling point. So instead of the 212 degrees Fahrenheit, when we dissolve something in the water, it will boil at a higher temperature. Probably not much higher, Depend it depends on what you add and how much of it that you add. Now, the opposite happens with freezing point. Whenever we take a substance and we put it into a solution and we freeze that substance, the freezing point does not go up, it goes down. So you'll frequently hear the terms boiling point elevation. So when boiling point goes up, when we add a substance to it, and freezing point depression. We get two new equations in this chapter. And so the first one right here, you're gonna see it actually has an F in it. So we know that we're working with freezing point for this one. And so you'll see that the, there's a delta T. And in science, we use the Greek symbol of a triangle, which is delta to represent difference. So this is the difference of the temperature. So it's the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And then we get I. Actually, it's negative I for a freezing point. But with the I, is basically how many, I like to think of it as ions, but it's how many particles are in the solution. And we'll dig more into that as we work through these problems. And then you also have a variable called K. And K is a constant, and this constant depends on the solution that you're using. And so for these, it will be given to you. You usually can look it up on the internet, or you can be the old fashioned way and look it up in a book, but it is given to you. And then we get the lowercase m, which you should recognize from the last set of problems as the molality. Now, a lot of these problems, you have to know the molality and it doesn't give it to you. So we're gonna get more practice in calculating it. But if we're not dealing with the freezing point, freezing point depression, we're gonna be dealing with boiling point, which we say boiling point elevation. And so for boiling point, it's a very similar equation the difference is, is that the I is not negative because we don't want, let's think about this. If it's boiling point elevation and the temperature is going up, so we're gonna be raising the temperature. And so the positive keeps the temperature going up in a positive direction. When we're dealing with freezing point, when we're lowering the temperature, we want a negative number and that will give us a negative difference in temperature, indicating the temperature going down. And so the difference is that the I is positive and the I is negative, and that for K, it has a subscript of F for freezing point and a subscript of B for boiling point. And this is yet still on this one, it's a constant that's dependent upon the solution that's given to you in these problems. So let's start with the first one. So question number 11 of the chapter nine comprehension check tells us, the freezing point of acetic acid is 16.6 degrees Celsius. If you dissolve 50 grams of glucose, that's a sugar, into 500 grams of acetic acid, what is the freezing point of the solution? So basically, I have a sample of acetic acid and I am gonna be dissolving into it glucose. And so we've talked about how the freezing point will be depressed or going down. And so it wants to know as when I dissolve the sugar into this acetic acid, what's the new freezing point? So I'm gonna to go to my freezing point formula, which is this one. And I'm really gonna to look to see what variables do I have? What do I need to figure out? And we'll go from there. So if I take this formula, now I'm looking for the new freezing point, so I don't know the temperature difference. That's kind of what I'm looking for. And I have negative I, the constant, and the molality. So I can easily calculate the I. So we talked about how I is the number of particles that go into the solution. Well, this is a compound, is a covalent compound. There's no metals in here. It's just non-metals. It's you may recognize it, similar like a carbohydrate from the past chapter, 
And so what this compound does is it has physical bonds. And so when I put it in water, or in this case, acetic acid, it does dissolve into the solution, but since it's a covalent compound, it doesn't break apart. And so we only end up with one particle or one type of particle floating around in our solution. So the I is just a one. So it's negative one. And then they told me KF. And then the molality. I don't know the molality, but I do know how to calculate the molality. So the molality is the moles of the solute over the kilograms of the solvent. So do I know the moles of the solute? I don't, so let's go to moles. So take a minute, calculate it out yourself, and then check yourself. You should basically take your 50 grams of your glucose and you're gonna multiply it by the molar mass, which is 180.18 grams cancels out and you're left with your unit in mole of 0.78 moles. Now, to find molality, we needed the moles and the kilograms of the solvent. So let's see if we have that. So we have 500 grams of the solvent. So we just have to convert that into kilograms, which I remember from King Herod diet that I just have to move my decimal point three places. So it ends up being 2.5 kilograms. So I'm going to calculate the molality. So I take my number of moles and I calculate it by my kilograms of my solvent and you get 0 0.56 molality. Now all I'm going to be doing now for this part is taking the molality and putting it in for the variable that I didn't know. So if I keep, I feel like there's a line there, right? Um, if I keep molality on the top, you'll notice that it's going to cancel out with this molality. And what's left is my going to be my unit is going to be in degrees Celsius, which is I'm looking for a temperature. So if I put all this through my calculator, when I put all this in my calculator, I get a temperature difference of negative 2.18 degrees Celsius. Now that's not really what the problem is asking me though. It's not asking me for the change of temperature. It's asking me for the new freezing point. So to calculate the new freezing point, we know freezing point goes down as we dissolve something in it. So I'm going to take the original freezing point and I'm going to subtract the temperature change. All right, so once I've done the difference of the temperature change, I get a new freezing point for my acetic acid when it has glucose in it as 14.4 degrees Celsius. And a good question to ask yourself for these is when you're doing freezing point, is, is my new temperature lower than my original temperature? Because remember, freezing point depression, the freezing point is gonna be going down. Question number 12 is also another freezing point question. They're just asking for a little bit different variable. So in this question, a chemist has a sample of water and they're wanting to lower the freezing point. And so we actually know they're wanting to lower it by a negative, by 5.6 degrees Celsius. And the sample of water they have is 568 grams of water. So the question is, if I have 568 grams of water, how many grams of sodium carbonate do I need to add to it to lower the freezing point? And so we're going to calculate very similar, but we're looking for a different variable. So let's figure out what we have. We actually know delta T. They told us the change in temp freezing point. It is negative 5.6. And do I know I? Well, I is the number of particles that the compound splits into. So if I take sodium carbonate, sodium carbonate is an ion because sodium is a metal, so it is going to split up into its parts. So what it splits up into though is we have two sodiums and one carbonate. And if you'll remember, carbonate's a polyatomic ion, so it has physical bonds, and so it's not gonna split into carbon and oxygen. So you're gonna be left with three particles in your water, two of sodium and one of carbonate. So I is three. 
So then we have a constant that they gave us. And then the next part we have of the problem that we don't know is the molality. And they don't actually give us the molality. And if you'll think about it, molality includes the moles of the solute. So it's how much of the solute we're adding and how much of the water, of the water that we have. Well, we're actually wanting to know how much of the solute. So molality is going to be our unknown for this first part of the equation. So go ahead and algebra, solve this through. So I'm not going to walk you through the algebra of this, but when you solve through, you end up with a molality of one. So knowing that my molality is one, I can now work through the molality problem to figure out the moles of solute that I had. So if molality is one, it equals my moles of solute over my kilograms of solvent, which is water. And I know how many kilograms of water I have. Well, actually, I know many grams. So I'm gonna move my decimal three places and I get 0.568 kilograms of water. So now I'm gonna keep doing the algebra. I'm gonna take my, five point, my 0.568, multiply it over here by one. So I know that I end up with 0 0.568 moles and that's actually the moles of the solute which is Na2CO3. Now my question doesn't ask for it in moles that would be too easy so the question is asking for it in grams so yet yeah, once again we're going to go from moles to grams. So when I'm going from my moles to grams I take my 5.68 moles that I calculated earlier and I'm going to multiply it by the molar mass which is 105.99 and I get a result of 60 grams of Na2CO3. So if I took 60 grams of sodium carbonate and I added it to 568 grams of water, I should lower the temperature by 5.6 degrees Celsius. So just to recap of what we did, is we took our, we took our freezing point depression formula, we took our freezing point depression formula, we put in what we knew, we didn't know the molality, so I solved for the molality and I realized the molality was one. So from that, I was able to solve for the moles of solute. Once I knew my moles of solute, I was able to calculate grams, which is what the question was asking. Last problem of the chapter nine comprehension check. It's very similar um, to the, boil, the freezing point questions that we were just doing. So the question says a salt water solution is made with 35 grams of NaCl, that's just table salt, and the boiling point is 102 degrees Celsius. How many kilograms of water was used in making the solution? So for this question, I know how much salt I have and I know the temperature. So what I'm trying to calculate is how many grams of the water that was used. And so grams of water is actually the kilograms of solvent so that's gonna be in the molality of the equation. Now for this equation, we're doing boiling point. So we're using the boiling point equation and we need to remember on this one that I is actually positive. So if we have delta T and I'm just gonna fill in what I know. Um, this kind of, you should already know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And so they tell you 102 and so I can do the difference. The difference is two. For I, for sodium chloride, it's an ionic bond. It's an, it's an ionic bond of a sodium and a chlorine. And so it's gonna split into those two ions. So I is a two. They tell me KB. and I'm looking for molality. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate this through and solve for M. So my molality equals two. So I'm gonna go ahead and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take molality and I'm gonna solve it using the molality equation. So if my molality is two, do I know my moles of my solute? Well, I actually don't know moles of solute because they gave it to me in grams. So I'm gonna to have to calculate that. So 35 grams.
and the molar mass of sodium chloride All right, so going to moles again. So they give to me in grams of sodium chloride and I'm gonna to convert to moles of sodium chloride and I know it's 0 0.59 moles. So I'm gonna come in here and for my moles of solute, 0 0.59. And this is my moles of NaCl. And it's gonna go over my kilograms of water which I actually don't know, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So I'm gonna solve for this. So I would move kilograms over to this side and then, right, multiply both sides by kilograms and then divide this side by two and then divide this side by two. So my kilograms would equal 0 0.59 divided by two. And that yields Zero point three z kilograms of water. So I know that if I took 0.3 kilograms of water or 300 grams and I was to add 35 grams of salt to it, I would actually raise the boiling point from 100 degrees Celsius to 102 degrees Celsius. Good job, you're done with the chapter nine comprehension check.